So there's a popular family of instructions given to spiritual seekers from a variety of sources, uh, some of them quite credible, that go something like this. Abide in awareness, rest as awareness, or abide in the I am, or rest as the self, abide in the self, right? All of these kinds of instructions. These instructions are essentially meant to reorient the seeker towards a sense of constant peace because the idea is that awareness or the I am is constant and it's sort of independent of circumstances and you sort of orient your mind towards that. Peace comes about and you sort of detach your attention from other things that are less constant and changing. So these instructions are not exactly wrong. There is some strong truth to them. And the reason there's some strong truth to them is because the awareness and the I am that's being referred to are concepts that are reflections of the truth, reflections of the true self. So there's a strong connection with the true self. But the true self, unlike the awareness and the I am that's being spoken of in these instructions, isn't a concept. It can't be thought of. It can't be rested as. It can't be abided in. Why not? Because you are it. You are that. So there's no possibility of resting in it because that would require you to be able to think of it and therefore to rest as it. You can't rest as it. You have to be independent of it in order to rest as it. So what's actually happening here is there's a concept of awareness or the I or the self, which is associated with some kind of subtle feeling in the seeker, and it might vary from seeker to seeker, and the seeker is told, place your attention there. Grasp and cling to this concept. That's going to bring peace. The problem is, while this may be true for a while, it's a little bit like chewing gum. It starts out tasty and sugary. It ends up being flavorless and bitter. And the reason is, any concept will eventually prove its lim limitation, its rigidity, its kind of boringness. No concept is the self. And by keeping your focus on the idea of resting as your concept of awareness, you're kind of cabined in and limited and confined to this kind of limited feeling. Now, it's not entirely wrong, I say, because the fact of the matter is by any form of concentration, especially concentration on something which is so close to the self, the mind quiets, and from quietness of mind, good things can happen. Someone can be led deeper. But from the strict seeking standpoint, the way to the self is away from ignorance meaning away from concepts. So we have our two basic methods, self-inquiry and surrender, and they both function in that way. Self-inquiry says, don't abide as the I am. Try to locate the I am. Chase after the I am. And don't think you found it, because in fact, every time you think you found it, you haven't. You've merely found something else of which I am aware. So keep your eye fixed on that sense of I amness and chase it without imagining that you've actually caught it. You can't rest in it. It is a chase, an active chase. And in the process, you get rid of all the things 
that you think the I am is. And finally, when you brush them aside with enough vigor and continuity and intensity, then insights start to be gained that can't be stated in words. These insights are there, they're merely obscured. In fact, they're not even really obscured. Even the idea of obscuration is a uh, kind of fantasy. Conversely, with surrender, what's happening, you're told, ignore all thoughts, accept the thought to ignore all thoughts. By ignoring all thoughts in the same way, sort of the opposite side of the coin of self-inquiry, you're getting rid of everything that is a concept, a perception, a feeling, all these changeable objects. What's left is the self. You can't get there by resting as it. You can't get there by abiding in it. And these are just ideas. You have to push away the distorted ideas, the distorted perceptions that distract you from the undeniable, obvious, self-evident truth. So again, while resting as awareness or abiding as self or resting as the I am or any of these kinds of instructions are not wholly wrong, they can bring a measure of peace. They are linked, in a sense, to the self by being reflections of them. These are, in fact, the very reflections that spiritual investigation is meant to penetrate. Our idea of awareness, our idea of the I am, our idea of the self, these are false. These are precisely the things that have to be quote unquote seen through in order for recognition of the true self to shine unobstructed.